When I go to a thrift store and I see paper like this, I get so excited because it's nice big paper that I can use for many things. Hello, welcome to my channel. This is Darcy's Misadventures with Mixed Media. Uh, one thing I'm going to do with this paper today is make a nice big master board with it. And the other thing that it's great for is to use as drop paper. It is, it's just a nice uh, sketchbook paper. It's not too heavy, not too thick. But, you know, if you use it for your drop paper or under paper, some people call it, then you'll have some fun things to play with in journals later on for journal pages, scrapbook pages, scrapbook pages, yeah, collage pages, whatever. But today, I am just going to glue stuff all over. Masterboard? What is a masterboard, you ask? It is a larger piece. That you either collage, paint, do whatever you want on it. That you then cut down into smaller pieces like journal tags, journal cards, pockets, postcards. Whatever you like. Alright, I have some straw paper here too. Which is going to be nice for... Um, what will it be nice for? Words are hard. It's I've been up since 7. I don't like being up since 7. Um, oh, for some neutral base when there's like a lot of color going on. So I am just going to start gluing. I'm just going to use my glue stick. Um, you could do this with glue stick, gel mat medium. It doesn't really matter. And usually when I start, I just, you know, glue right on here because I'm going to get glue on it anyway. So it's really not that big of a deal. And these are just we got a little bit of gel print on them and inking on them, book pages. That'll be just fun to use. Oh my goodness. And getting glue everywhere. That's always fun. Yeah, that one's a little bit more plain, which is cool. So I'm just, people ask all often too, what do you do with your gel plate prints? Well, collage is one main re thing. Uh, another thing I use them for is pages in a junk journal. But um, collage is a really fun, fun thing to do with them. I think. Now, you might be thinking, oh, but those are exactly across from each other. Doesn't matter. Because it's going to get cut down and they're not even going to be on the same piece when, we're, when it's all said and done. I'm getting glue everywhere. <laughs> Just going to grab a baby wipe. That... Alright, anybody else have problems with like the baby wipes don't close so the first one's always dry and then you have to take out the second one and it feels like such a waste. I mean, I will use, um, hey little birdie, there's a birdie on the azalea bush outside. And the azalea bush, oh I gotta go take pictures of it, it's, it's full bloom right now. It's really cloudy today though. So I don't know that I want to go out there at the moment, but alright, let's see. That is opposite on the color wheel but that's okay we, we don't worry about that kind of stuff so it is also on pretty thick paper and so when I'm done with this I will probably cut them down uh, I have a project coming up in the next few months that requires a certain size where's the dry one a certain size um piece of ephemera and so I have been cutting up a lot of it. Way more than I'm going to need. But I will put some in my shop. I just don't. The, part of the reason they're not in my shop yet. Is because I don't know how much to charge for them. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm not a. I don't like to charge a lot. But I don't want to undercharge either. Because it's unique one of a kind stuff. That you can't just get. Oh, see. Alright. I have pieces that are. Alright. This is why I have to rip up my pieces in order to use them because otherwise I'll never use them so oops, let's just go ahead and rip it you even just go I know I usually go a little bit more um all right those are now weird shapes we'll give that a minute we'll give that a minute to think about itself but I'm more apt to do more squared off pieces. I don't mind if there's pieces that are not squared off. I just, I don't know. I like at least two sides to be squared off, maybe. I don't know. What do you guys like to do when you're making master boards? Do you like it all ripped higgly piggly and any shape will do? Or 
do you prefer something more in the line of kind of, you know, squares and rectangles and whatnot? All right, can I get that off right now? Because that's going to bug me a little bit. I'm going to put my straight lines on the outside edges because that will just help my brain a little bit. And I tend to try to put a couple pieces of each design, but that's not important, especially on something this large, because it's not going to show in the end. I'm just using um, a, you know, a dried out baby wipe to just so I don't get my fingers as sticky, basically. And it's a little damp. It's not totally dried out. All right. Let's find some more. I have bunches and bunches. Oh, here we go. I've got... I've just been kind of tearing up my gel plate prints and stuff just so that I would use them. You could even put some music page in here just to break it up a little bit as well. I'm not sure what the intent was at for that, but All right, I think it's time to bring out the the glue book. Let's see. Each side has a little bit of pencil mark on it, which I like because that just means, you know, it was a used book <laughs> with pencil marks just means somebody actually used the book. And I like that in a, uh, um, let's just use this, in a, in a book, in a, in a page, in a, you know, something I'm using for collage. My goodness, words are hard. So I thought I would go ahead and take you through uh, a large master board all the way to cutting it down. I just threw my book on the floor. That was dumb. Ooh, but I found a really cool piece. Oh, no. I was like, oh, I found a really cool piece to use, but that's on uh, a heavier piece, and that's already cut into the size that it needs to be cut. That's the other thing I've been doing is just taking my um, cardstock ones, the ones that are on heavier cardstock, and cutting them down to the size that I need for the upcoming project and then I would have off cuts that can be used for journal tags and whatnot and I've got quite the stash happening now well that sounded like I've got quite the mustache happening now which no right now it's okay Let's see. How about a little bit of orange because that's what we pulled up and I'm not going to worry too much about the colors. I want it to be colorful and eclectic. And then I can always, if it's too colorful and too eclectic, I can always add some gesso. So it's not a big deal. A lot of these pages I just kind of tore into three pieces because that's the size that would fit in a legal size envelope. So if I sell them, I can have the at least the shipping not be too much. So there's that. Oh my goodness, so sticky. Yeah, if you don't like getting glue on your fingers, this might not be the project for you. Just saying. I oh, love this one. Do we want to keep the... No, we don't actually. And I kind of like how it goes from one color to the next color. I'm going to... This one I'm okay with how it does that. So I hope everybody is well. Let's see, I did ask the question, how do you like to collage? Do you like to use you know, neat pieces or do you like to use just scraps that are all over the place with the shape? Um, so I would love for you to answer that in the comments. I love comments. I like, and part of the reason I do this is because of the community and so getting to interact with you guys on comments is fabulous just saying in case you're wondering it's, it's always a good thing well nice comp and if you're being sarcastic you have to use a uh, emoji or i will i mean if you're being silly f f silly use a emoji if you're being like sarcastic and rude don't use an emoji and then I'll know you're being sarcastic and rude. <laughs>
because that's how my brain works. Just saying. I don't know about anybody else, but that's how my brain works. All right, and let's see. Ooh, we get a little bit of grunge and blue. Well, I pulled it out. You know, we're just, we're not, I'm trying not to overthink it too much. It's just kind of like what I pull out, that's what I'll put in next. And I'm not going to stress about it. Now, I do like this particular grungy bit. And I kind of want it to just be the grungy bit. And that will go on the top layer somewhere. Just because that's fun. But these smaller pieces can go ahead and go on anywhere. And they're fairly neutral, really. A little bit of a light orange. But we've already got orange on here. So, not a big deal. Not a big deal at this cord. It's getting on my nerves. I don't know. You see it getting on your nerves? Probably should check my thing too just to make sure. I think we're okay. I'm a little off screen just because this is so big and I don't know if I can pull out more or not. There, I think that's a little bit better. Oh yeah, my chair is still squeaking. Somebody made me laugh though because they're like, maybe you just need to dunk your whole chair in oil. <laughs> like, maybe. That's the possibility that that might be the only thing that's going to work. All right. Overlap. I don't mind overlapping. I kind of like the look in the end. It makes it a little bit thicker, but, you know, these that I'm working on probably need to be a little bit thicker. So, I had the thought with these black circles in here that I would doodle in them. Uh, but I didn't do it before I cut it down. I could always still do that once it's in its final, once at its final destination. I know, it's crazy. It doesn't look like it's gonna go at all. I don't know how about I feel about that circle. Well, let's just think of it as an, of, as an oval. Just think of it as an oval. All right, there's a bunch of glue going on there. I'm just going to kind of wipe that off on there. So I, did, I think I asked how you guys. So yeah, I like to know what you guys are working on. Um, and if you have a, an Instagram or, or YouTube account, you can post that in the comments as well. So I can check you out and come see what you're working on. You have my permission to do that. Um, especially if you're an art person. I mean, I don't know why you'd be watching me if you weren't. And, you know, a person that likes to create. That's, that's an art. That's an artist. If, if you create stuff, you're an artist. Don't, don't go, uh, telling yourself otherwise. Let's see. A little bit of, it's just nice sometimes to break up all the, uh, All the color and print with a little bit of um, prosiness. I don't know which side I want. Gray backs of its flocking houses with fragments, ramparts. I don't want. I don't know. It's a Marcel Proust. Mark. What's his name? Anyway, it's the Swan's Way. It's the name of the book, but it's got nice aged pages, and it wasn't near the top of the pile, so it got, whoops, used. And my fingers are sticky, so that makes it a little bit difficult too. Mm, I think I'll go up here so then I can cut that off. And we'll just have a little strip left to put there. All right. Oh, what about these bubbles? They kind of go a little bit with... Oh my goodness, my fingers are... Have I mentioned that my fingers are sticky five million times? Well, let's measure it another five million times, because why not? Some of the bubble paper, that's fun to stick in there wherever. And if I don't throw stuff, then I can find it when I need it. I don't think that got... Now things are sticking to me. So yeah, I've been thinking about doing a uh, masterboard start to finish all the way down to the uh, 
the scrap pieces, the scrap pieces, the journal, the pieces to go in the journal. Oh my goodness. And as soon as I let, you know, showed that sketchbook paper, I was like, oh, that'd be perfect. Because sometimes I want like a really big piece. And then you don't, your master board doesn't have to be this big. It can be anything that you'll be able to cut down, um, which could be any, you know, just paper size. Usually I have a, I have a, a line notebook that I'll use. I don't really want to introduce this right now. <laughs> I know I said I was just going to use what I've got here, but yeah, that's, that's different. Uh, let's be a little bit more. Um, oh, we have orange in here. We could add a little bit of this fringy numbers. Uh, this was a digital that I just gel pointed, gel pointed, gel printed some transparent, semi transparent colors over to kind of give it a glaze and a different look. So I think they're fun. I think Eddie got some and he did use, use some in his. Um, Maker's Creative Collab Project. Let's just do a number four. Carrie the Crafter and I, we like the number four. And that could be perfect right there or I actually might put it there. Sometimes some overlapping pieces are nice just to give a little bit more texture and whatnot so just kind of overlap especially where there's like four connecting pieces there that's where I usually tend to want to do that let's see what have I got over here I have some more of oh, I've got some. this is just a digital that I've got but it brings in a different pattern kind of a deal in my way. Oh, and I need a little something up there, and it's got that purple in it. Not that I needed to have that purple in it, but it's nice that it does. Like I said, I'm trying not to worry too much about being all matchy matchy. I think we've covered that, haven't we? I think we've uh, proven that. Where this is, I can't be trusted <laughs> with tools. They just disappear. Uh, this paper does not want to stick down so great. So I may end up, once I get these cut down to size, I may potentially sew them and that would get, catch any corners like that. All right, we have this nice little grungy piece, which I was thinking as a, a piece to go, oh, see here's a lot of connections right here, but I don't like that there. I don't know. We got time. And it doesn't even have to go on this piece. Alright, let's pull out some more out of the pile. We have this, which is just really cool paper that was a brayer off. Um and brayer offs, if you're using brayer offs, if you you can in the project that's upcoming, brayer offs from gel printing are accepted. I think there's going to be a lot of things that are accepted, but, but we don't get to find out exactly what the challenge is until June, so I don't hate that. Just filling spaces now. All right, I do not have a cutter big enough to cut this, so I'm probably, oh, I had that a different direction, but that's okay. I'm probably gonna have to cut it in half and then cut it down, but that's all right. Why do I keep bringing that in? I don't know. That has some of that, um, I used this stamp that I used for that, which is really not even a stamp. But I am going to try it. Oh, that's kind of close to that one. Oh, man. I don't think I have a space, actually. I can put it right there. I can overlap somewhere. It's all right. I just want to bring some more of this in. It was a piece of foam that I found on the ground. I think is what I was starting to say. 
and it made these really cool things. So I'm hopefully going to turn it into a stamp for Pam Artist Studio. I just haven't gotten that far yet. Uh, see, there's a lot going on right there. So, but that's got a lot going on too. So I think, where's my numbers? Not these numbers. I have, where oh, the green numbers work? I have some green numbers somewhere here. Greenish kind of numbery-ish things. Well, they're not numbers, but um, no letters. There's numbers in there somewhere, but and the papers that I these printables that I used that I gel printed over gel printed over are from my porch prints. I couldn't remember that a week or two ago. I could not remember the name of her shop to save my life. But I saw it yesterday and thought to myself, oh, I need to remember the name of that shop. <laughs> and I did. It's like magic. Tell yourself to remember something and you do. Uh, we have a spot here. We do have this spot. That's all right. That works. Oh, stuff's falling off the bed. Bed? Off the desk. Oh my word, words are hard sometimes. Shocker. Ow, just jam my finger with that. All right, we just have that one spot up here to cover and then it's covered. Not that. How about a little bit of bright yellow, because why not? It's just crazy enough, it might work. And no, I don't, or, well, I have a similar-ish color somewhere on there, so. Throwing things, and you can't find them again, so stop throwing them. All right, now, let's see. I'm pretty sure that's 18 inches, so. This is my biggest one, but definitely gonna have to cut this down a little bit first. So. Scissors. Oh, we missed a spot. Who was trying to tell me that? So we'll just put some more of these. Q and R. You're going right there. T U V W X Y and Z. Ow, I just banged my finger again. Feeling a little klutzy today, people. Feeling a little klutzy. It's Friday. It's Friday. I mean, Friday means nothing to me other than my husband will be at work tomorrow. <laughs> He's at his mom and dad's today. So I get a little bit of quiet time to... Alright, we're going to blind cut this. It's a thing. I mean, I can see through it, but that's alright. Um, I need this to be like 12 inches long, so I need to cut it right about here. Would have been better if I had been like, oh, let's cut six inches off, but. And now I still need to cut. Still need to get it down to like 12 inches so that I can use it in here. So I'm doing six by four for most of my bits here. Let's go ahead and cut this off at four. I'm gonna give myself a little space because I need to straighten off my edges here. So now we're going at four, and then I could use just a tiny bit of smidgen. All right, that's all right. So six, six by four by six or six by four. That's the size I'm needing. This should be six right here. No, that's less. Okay, so I'm gonna cut this again smaller at two and a half. But I said that was five and a half so two and three quarters so would be about that way okay so while I do want the majority to be four by six I will take other sizes too also all right that's the top that 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 part up here should be straight this side over here is definitely not straight and also
I'm gonna have to line it up down here. Because that top bit's not straight. All right, so let's go ahead and cut six. Yeah, because that's not quite 12, so six, by four. four and then we're just going to even this one off and have it it's going to be about three and a half ish so that'll be a nice big tag or journal card can anybody tell what was oh this is the wonky side over here so it's just now it's small enough i can straighten it all right it's not quite all right i'm going to do this at Four, and that will give me at least one four by six and that one is five almost five and a half so a little about two, 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 two and three quarter ish this one is less than four it is like three let's do just a bunch of I'm not even seeing what size they are we'll just you know, like that looks good that looks good. Oh, and a squarish one. All right. So, oh, and we have this piece, which is, let's see, that one. Just need to even off my edges a little bit. Well, I don't have to. It's okay if I've got stuff coming off the edges. So that's a skinny one. This one is going to also be skinny. It's only going to be like an inch wide and if we want to try it as a belly band we want it to be about eight and a half inches we could add to it to make it a little bit bigger for all right you ready for the magic i'm not saving all these tiny little bits that were yeah if you start with like a piece that fits in your cutter it, it does help a little bit all right so here is the piece that can be like part of a belly band that's just an inch one inch by eight and a half inches this one could go either way it could just be a tag or a side tuck that actually ended up okay because there's some red in with this green and orange and red so that actually turned out all right uh that one's fun too these could be tags journal cards or pockets uh, i think this one is one of the one four by six ones we got little ones and do any size you want you know, I mean, I went with what I could get out of this with, you know, doing this. Now, that one's mostly that, and that's all right, because it's still cool. Purple and orange. I like those together fine. Purple and uh, olive, uh, what is that? It's a uh, sap green is what it is. Now, that one has a lot on it. So, that one I might, you know, ooh, this one I think is one I'd want to gesso a little bit. And maybe that one too, and just make it a background. Oh, my letters go one way, my music goes another way. It's okay. I mean, you could always do it sideways. So I have um, three four by six pieces that are going to go into my project box for another thing. What's this four by six? I think this one's also four by these. This one's not four by six. Um, but I'm going to see. Which ones I might want to add a little bit of gesso to. That one just has like a little, you know, just, I don't know. Let's pull the gesso out and see where we go with that. And when I say gesso, apparently, I think I do have one here that has gesso in it, but do you think it's in front of my face? No, it's not. So you can use gesso, acrylic paint, a matte paint. This one is top notch uh, matte medium. That's a golden matte medium. That's a golden gloss medium. That's the... I don't know. Did I mislabel one of these? Because I'm pretty sure one of these is, has gesso in it. But I don't... Sorry, my brain just... So I'm just going to use my, my matte white paint. Acrylic paint. Because that's just easier. And... All right, sorry about this mess, but I, I need a little bit of uh, paint to cover that. So <laughs> just going to go ahead and just kind of where my edges meet, 
I'm just going to kind of use my finger. You could use brush. You don't have to stick your finger in your paint. If that is bothersome to you, you don't have to do it. Um, let's see. You can just come with a brush. This is a real rough brush. Oh, and it's got a little bit of color in it, but that's all right. But it pushes, let's see, you can even just do the whole thing even. A little dry brushing, just, you know, you take some paint off, you put some paint off, and take your, put some paint on, take some paint off, and then, you know, and that just pushes everything to the background. Uh, this was a digital, and it might have been on a lighter weight paper, so that, you know, color got a little uh, picked up by the gesso, the wet, it, the wet affected it. So anyway, and uh, let's just kind of the nice thing about a rough brush like that is it just I don't know if I'm, I don't I don't want to get up right now. It gives it. A, you'll see them afterwards. It gives a nice um, rough nothing. Nice, it helps with grunge. If you want grunge, then these brushes are your friend, especially with dry brushing. Just kind of pushes it all to the background. All right, I'm gonna need more of that. Put some on the brush, take a lot off the brush. I didn't take as much off the brush as I was thinking, but that's all right. So now the orange, it's still there, but it's not in your face orange anymore. And you can still see some of the pattern. So this is where adding something to your background helps make it a background. So that's, and that's why it really, it doesn't have to matter what colors you put or, you know, what your things look like that you're putting on your master board, because you can come in with, uh, some paint or gesso afterwards and just kind of push it all back and make it a background there that one's got more white because I throw things and then I can't find them when I want them where is my well that's all right I've got a credit card I could use my scraper I was looking for oh I do have and you, you don't have to get a catalyst tool. I just did because I keep watching Jackie Bernardi use hers and having so much fun with it with her paint. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to want to try that with paint. But you can use just a, a card, a credit card, a scraper from the, uh, the cake decorating section at the store or whatever. See, I need to put some of my paint. These black lines are just too in my face, which is why I wanted to uh, do my gesso on here. All right, that really pushed it back quite a lot. Gosh, guys are here. In case you couldn't tell, I think you can tell. I'm just kind of pressing it down into the, oh, see, that's what I want is that. Sometimes my credit card will do it. Where's my, not credit card, but you know, gift card kind of a deal. Bottles keep falling on my desk. I don't think it's raining yet, but it was super cloudy this morning. I was just like, it was like, is it really seven o'clock? It feels like much earlier. Like, felt more like five o'clock. Just, okay, come on. All right, we're gonna have some. That one's gonna be a lot covered. That's all right. This one, I don't know. That bottom part is this middle part. The bottom part or the top part is fine. It's that middle part that's I'm not loving. Doesn't matter what direction you go. That's right, that's what I was trying to do before was just kind of press it down into the paint to get just some weird fun stuff happening. Just gonna... 
squish it down. And then uh, move it around. Why? Because then I'm not having as much control. Sometimes, not, because you don't, when you think you have control, you don't any, it, hey, look, there it is, right there in front of my freaking face. All right. These are, I put really thin layers on there, so they're all right. I just want a little bit of, there we go, that's good. Glue that down, glue that down, she says. Right, because why would the glue be right here where it's supposed to be? I mean, yes, the glue stick is, but I was originally looking for my heart glitter glue, and that is definitely not where it's supposed to be. All right, we will put the nice pretty paper back down. Oh, we missed a piece. Do we want to do anything? Just get whatever we can off of that brush. And uh, my water cup is full of other brushes. So now I could even come in and take some of these pieces I've already used for a book page if I want something a little bit more neutral. Let's see. This one need something and I'm gonna want some focal points so we're doing these start to finish right except for the two that are for a future project all right I want to do a little stamping now that I see these all out and about like this so let me find well let me find it should be right here my script stamp and I think I'll do that in black but I don't want the VersaFine Claire black I want a less than perfect black and because it needs to be re-inked I think this one is definitely a less than perfect black so if I overlap them like that then I can just go ahead and lay the whole stamp down Oh my goodness, we don't have to be this precise, lady. Lady. <laughs> See, it's, it's not perfect because my ink pad is not perfect and how I'm stamping is not perfect, and it's good because I don't want perfect. So there's that. Oh, I would like to actually get it, you know, down straight. That would be really great. We don't, which way does this one go? Well, the music goes that way, and then we're just gonna go sideways, and then we won't have to worry about it so much. All right, got a little bit of text stamping on there. And this is why we have our drop paper or under paper. We can get our stamps off on there and um, anything else we like to do. Let's see, let's grab out some mark making ones. And I've got a lot of teal in here. But I like navy blue, so I usually put navy, and there is some navy blue in there also. This is Twilight versus Fine Claire. And these stamps have been abused. So they don't necessarily act right because I've gotten paint on them. And things don't act right after you get paint. I like to go straight with this one. That's hate when it goes crooked. But, and also I'm really bad at going across the middle, which is partly why I am uh, putting these across each other like this so that I will maybe get some of the uh, stamping in the middle and not just on the edges like I tend to do. That one was crooked. But I, I think I'm getting it a little bit more random by doing it like this, which I like. 
a little bit at the top. It's fine. Okay. Because generally when I do this, I'm more apt to go like on the edges. You know, a little bit there, a little bit there maybe. And I always forget to go in the middle. There. I had to go in the middle there. But see, that's less random. I'm kind of like in this, this randomness that happens when I layer them a little bit and then just trying to keep them straight and th that's not even straight. Okay. Then just kind of go across it like that. And then that one ends up a little bit more random. That one's a little bit more random. I just pressed lightly so I got random. And I don't have a lot on here right now. So I just kind of pressed lightly and got random on that. This is one of my favorite stamps. This little cross hatch line stuff happened. Oh, did I not do this one? No, I did not do that one. Is there any left on here? Just enough. And, you know, circles are always nice. What happened to my circles? Here they are. I'm going to do that with these too because I definitely struggle with random with my circles and I like to overlap over uh, lap patterns so I'm okay if I get some overlap in patterns here and okay if I don't all right and I think I'll do blue again blue or black you know circles always look good in black and I'm going to use the archival black so that I don't get them perfect. You can even use a uh, marker or, or paint pen or something. Now these don't have to be as uh, straight because they're circles. So I don't, I don't stress out as much about those. And because I use the archival, they're not super dark. They're just in the background. Part of the background where I want them to be. I don't want them to be part of my world. I want them to be part of my background. Just a small part of the world. Part of my world. Part of your world. It's your, not my. I don't know words very well. Words are... I'm only gonna press really hard, see if I can get anything. Yep, just a little bit. But that makes it more random because there wasn't as much ink on there. I think that I want some of these to be darker. This is the Nocturne, so it's a black, first fine, clear black. So these ones are going to be totally part of my world. I could even do a ghost print, though. Just kind of, just lightly put it on there. See the difference? It would help if I had these ready to go. Okay, let's just go straight across here, see what gets what. See, much, much stronger. I'm okay with just that little bit on there. That needs a little something. Oh, I might like these in the darker version here. That just got a little bit on the bottom. There we go. And just keep getting the ghost prints here, which is still fairly dark. Not a bad thing. That's the difference between diversifying and the, uh, because yes, I do kind of need to re-ink my archival ink, but also I re-inked my archival ink not really that long ago. So there's that. Yeah, it's just barely there. I want some on this white down here though, if I can. There we go. There we go. All right, so we've done some gesso and some stamping. Uh, now would be a good time if you want to add texture with some um, texture, some modeling paste through stencils or stenciling. But I think I'm pe pretty happy with this. Um, and now I'm going to, I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to figure out my center point, my center point, my focal pieces. All right, and sometimes what takes the longest is finding uh, focal points. So for this one, this originally was a piece that was, you know, like this. So I cut it apart so I could do something a little different with it. Uh, 
um, since I've got a tall tag here, I don't know where I want that to go, but I want at least part of that to show. And I need to do this one quick before that dries because I think this is supposed to go underneath. <laughs> And this, this side of this flower was kind of a little bit on the wonky side. Oh, look. Doesn't matter now. Cause there we go. Um, because I cut it off from the other flowers. This would be better with our glitter glue. Just because these are kind of... Since I just got glue all over that. Oh, well, it'll dry. It'll dry fairly clear, too. So, those overlap the clock a little bit, which is fine. And I could wrap that around. I could cut it off. Or I could back it, which I think I might back it so that it can just be a tag with a piece that sticks off. It almost makes it like a tab. Um, so, then you're just going to take some book page or probably just go ahead and... This is already on cardstock, so just maybe take a little piece of cardstock from your. This is heavier paper. It's not quite cardstock, but it uh, feels like it's at least 32 pounds. And if I can see about how that is like about two and a half inches. So, whoops, I'm going to attempt to cut out my two and a half. I think I have a two and a half, yep. Yeah. So I'm just gonna cut out two and a half inch circle and just put the whole circle all the way across. Because that just feels like the easiest thing to do right here. And so, yep, yeah, that will back it nicely. You can still write on that circle. And I uh, have the clock hanging off. So, that's what you can do if you want a circle hanging off. <laughs> and you don't want to have to like fussy cut it necessarily. And I'll just ink it and that won't hardly show. So, there is tag or journal card number one. And the easiest... Oh, I'm going to cut off this flower though because it's wonky. It's the whole reason it got put on the edge. It's okay to just have, have one side cut off and have one side stick out. That's okay. Probably preferable. I mean, really. And then we have a nice little tall tag. And it's super cute. Now for this one, I'm just going to put a cluster on it. I have this cluster, which already has has another piece of gel plate print. This is just, you know, mostly covered up anyway. I don't mind terribly covering that up. Um, I can come off the side one way or the other. This uh, sap green and the turquoise, I like those colors together. So I'm good with that. So I'm just going to glue that cluster right on that tag and there we go now this one is going to be a little bit more funky and I may have to back it this flower is already backed a little bit right here so that is how I decided where it was going to come to on this so I know that I only need to glue that middle part. And I may back, back this whole piece at some point. So where these two connect, that, that's where I want that to cover. Pretty much. Pretty sure. And then this little cat. Oh, wait. Hold on. I need to keep that up because I think that this piece is going to come off here. I only need to do that one side. So I was just going to have a circle come off that side and potentially have this circle come off down here, which is the same side as that, but that's all right. It's going to go on a little further than that one, so it's not going to come off. It's not going to line up perfectly. And then I think this piece is going to be what he's standing on. And then he's just going to get to stand on there. And then if I back this whole piece on a wider piece, 
there if I put him, I was going to put him in the middle but I like that better because then some of this back piece shows and then that could be a belly band um, I can just reinforce these or I could just put like a three inch um, strip on the back to uh, back it either way so that is done and then oh this piece right here this will just become part of a cluster uh, you could just do kind of like what I'm doing here and then staple it or glue it and then this is a sticker but I think it's like a washi sticker so I'm just gonna glue it on there so that it keeps the uh, the weight that nice it's almost the same color as that so there we go cluster all right now this one he's so cute isn't he I know I broke his leg I'm going to cut this flower apart into pieces I just kind of want three would be good wouldn't it so like one piece is going to be in one of the corners so if I had it at oh hold on I do want it to touch this piece here a little bit because that's the piece that I'm kind of coordinating with as far as this this you know this piece here explains this choice here I think is what I'm trying to say And just a little down here in the corner, maybe. I'm not going to sing it this time. I'm not going to sing it this time. And then cut off all the excess. So, yeah, that's another thing that I will do is I will whoops, cut off my thing and make it crooked. Take a big flower and use cut it down to use as a border piece. Especially if there's like no stems or anything on it and then or I don't like like that had a weird shape to it so I was okay doing that all right his legs are already coming off where'd the book go my glue pages would be helpful but I can glue all over my under mat under layer under whatever I think it's funny when someone calls it an under layer because it sounds so close to underwear and I'm you know teenage 12 year old boy at heart whoops yeah now both legs came off that's okay we'll just he, and I left the ground for him so he had so I didn't have to worry about the ground well now that I have all those in the three corners maybe I'll move him closer over here mm. can I still move his legs without breaking them apart my fingers are Louie. Oh, he's going to have to move over to his leg. Well, he can be at an angle, right? Just a little bit of a... There we go. So then we have that, and I could just do this little clip the corners or round the corners or whatever it is you like to do to your corners. So there he is. I'll show them all in a minute up close. Now this one, um, I've just got a little piece to back it which I'll edge with a little bit of ink, which is hopefully on here because I don't, of course, why would they be in my, I did find, oh, I just found my art glitter glue. <laughs> so there's that. <laughs> found my art glitter glue when I was looking for my uh, ink pad. So I'm just gonna put a little piece of this, which tones down the background even more. And this easy fussy cut piece, which is in one of my kits, He's just, they're just nice because instead of having a cut between his legs and um, all the intricacies, the, the ticket is behind there so that, you know, it's an easy fussy cut. So there, there's that. And then some of these have like a line on the bottom, which is perfect for a ground. And I'm going to have her hang off here too so that I can fit this sticker on here. I think, is it a regular sticker or a washi sticker? I think it might be a regular sticker. The other one might have been too. The other one I just glued right down though. So I'm just going to glue that right there. I think that is hopefully, yep, her hand still touches it. And art glitter glue now that I know where you are. So I'm just going to kind of glue half of her. She's pretty thick cardstock, so I don't need to back her. She's already backed. Just make sure that both of her feet are on that mat the floor there so 
so she doesn't stick off quite as much as I thought she would, but that's all right. So there's her, and I think I'll turn that one into a little tag. Ow! You know, and also pinch my finger. Now this one I thought would also be good with the fussy cut. It's got the purple down here, and this has a similar purple up here. And this green is almost the same green. So I'm just going to put that on there like that. I do want to ink it first, though. And uh, I had so stupid when I, oh, it's right, no, nope, that's not it. Oh my goodness. Oh, every time I sit, all right, and I think I'm just gonna, did I get that on there straight? No, not even a little bit. Yes, and as soon as I pause the uh, video, I find the ink because that just seems to, and I don't normally center things, but because the coffee cup is over here, that, you know, I'm, I'm okay centering it. Uh, I love these little fat birds. They're just so freaking cute. So for this one, I'm just going to layer a little piece of neutrally type stuff, which also brings the red over to the other side and covers all that connections on that side. All right, it's hard to tell what's straight because I think I got my stamp crooked on there. And then he is just going to stand there. Um, I'm not going to give him a ground to stand on because this piece back here grounds him so that he's not just floating in, in space. So in my mind, that grounds him to keep him from to keep it look at, keep him from looking like he's just floating around. I did want his head to kind of cover that corner there. There we go. I don't know why. What did I do? Let's just. Oh, we might round the corners on this one, as we haven't done that yet. doing a quarter inch round on that you don't have to have the uh you could you know you can yeah that, i think i want round on these i don't i didn't like the squared off edges on that one all right we've got a couple more got several more <laughs> i'll see if i can cut off some of the stuff from the beginning so it's not so long so for him i am giving him something to he's gonna have this thing here to kind of sit on stand on and I will decide in a minute if I want to fold it over or if I want and then got the orange here to go with the orange there or if I want to have it be a hangover I might keep it as a hangover I'll just need to back it to reinforce it with something that's all so that kind of grounds him I mean not standing on it perfectly yeah I am his tail comes off of there so I am going to just give that um, I'm just gonna back that not right this second because we already have a long video all right so this one I'm not totally sure about this piece but it does have the blue that's down there I do wish though that it would be this side that showed maybe Nope, because I want him over. I want this to show more. All right. I'm trying to think. I don't really want to rip that off either just because. All right, we're just going to gently. Oh, we have the other side. That could be. All right. All right. I mean, I like the red line on this side and everything, but. Either side would have been pretty. And now that that piece ripped out, I might have liked the other side, but. Somebody was writing words that started with P. Placid, planet, planet. Somebody, yeah, that, that just looks like writing practice right there. Oh, let's get this iris back here. Wait, was there a... Oh, thought maybe there was a part I needed to cut out, but I think it's all right. But the iris just brings up some of that purple from down here and just kind of edging this middle piece with it. And then he just looks super cute right down there. I probably should ink him because I'm sure I didn't cut him out perfectly, but <laughs> that's all right. We don't have to ink everything. It can be uninked. It's all good in the neighborhood. There. And that has a little yellow in it. I mean, this is like a red orange, but then it's not anywhere else, but that's okay. <laughs> There's like hints of tones of it 
here and there. What, uh, what do we want to do with the edges? Uh, I think I'm just going to round the edges. Maybe I'll do the half inch this time. Now, sometimes the half inch side on my cutter doesn't cut very well. So when that happens, I just flip it over. Like that side did okay. And what I mean by that is if I feel like it didn't, then I just flip the card over and do it again. So that way it gets both edges, which it might have missed the first time. All right, here's another one of those daisies. So this is just a lot of, uh, it's, it's not as interesting to me, I don't think, in my mind. <laughs> so I figured I could go ahead and put those daisies up there and that would add to the design, you know, the background. But I'm just gonna have them kind of come in off the side. So there's still a good amount of stuff shown in there. And then I have this cute little fairy chipmunk because <laughs> he's so much smaller than the flower so he must be a fairy chipmunk but he's you know brings some of this dark down to the bottom is why I do that okay uh, I'm gonna make this one a tag and then oops then we have him and I did go ahead and bring in just a piece to back him because otherwise he kind of gets lost on there. And he's got this orange tone like down here and the brown and everything. And that red is a little overwhelming. And I could turn it over, but I don't like that any better. I still like that. So, but this it just makes it work. It's like magic. It also connects. Well, I wouldn't say it connects all three pieces because I'm going above that line. Oh, I did want it to be over enough so that his leg is between the that paper and that paper. I think I was going to angle him just a little bit like that. Yep. Because this, this branch here doesn't have to be straight. It can be on an angle because that might have been what it was in real life. I mean... It's an AI image, so there is no real life about it, but. <laughs> All right, but yeah, I wanted his beak to be covering that. So there we go. And I think I'll do the quarter inch. I know it's a quarter inch because I <laughs> put silver on there so I could know without having to look every time. So journal card or pocket. All right, and then this is the last one. Because remember, the, there's two more. I'll make sure I show those in the... That will be for a future... Three? Three more. That will be for a future project. So I haven't done anything with those yet. Those will be a future. So I'm just going to glue this in the background. Because there's just... A, I mean, he does look good without it. But also, it's, it's just... I don't know. I liked it better with this. And also, this kind of shows you different things you can use in your layers. And that you can totally use layers. Even though you've got layers in the background, you can keep adding layers. And I think I wanted him over. I don't know. I don't like him in the middle. I don't like anything in the middle. Well, ten I tend to not like things in the middle. I can't say never. Never say never. As a, uh, this is a bigger one, so I want bigger bigger angles for a tag and then you just flip that over line it up try to get your finger not to stick to it forever and ever amen and don't cut your finger when you do this and then this one because I have that big space is the perfect time to use my European all right getting it Eve middle in the middle is hard and I tend to do this on the back because otherwise I might be influenced by like where the lines are on the collage and not do it as even as I could. And I'm not saying it's perfectly even, but, and then that fills that empty space at the top. Cause I'm not a big add lace and frills and fibers to everything. Um, I might when they go into a journal, but as you can see the ones that I did here today, I did not. So for those that worry about my glue, let me put the cover on that. The cover is on my paint, okay. So there's this one, isn't he gorgeous? And this one, 
and this one definitely gonna have to cut some stuff out somewhere <laughs> and this one if you, if it's an hour and five or six minutes you'll know that I did not cut anything out <laughs> and that one he's so cute I think this was one of the focal funny focal points from Louisa Heinzel I love these fat birds they might be from Louisa too I'm not sure this is in my sh well this is I think part of the freebie in my shop for the one that so is this one the 1000 giveaway subscriber and you know if you have a collage and you have a line on the bottom built in floor for whatever little creature you want to stand on there whether it's a little Tim Holtz person or or what and then for tall things sometimes this is what I'll do maybe I have need something skinny and he's short so I just add interest by just adding things all up there and then we have this one where it comes off the edge I like that I like how we did those daisies and then these are the three that are for a future project all right, I hope you guys have a delightful day and I hope you enjoyed that. Love you.